Welcome back to Night Owl. This episode will be on the shorter side of things. Not so much in terms of the length of the video, but the amount of uh, progress that I was able to make on this one. Uh, not so much as other episodes. Uh, but there's a good reason for that, or at least a reason for that. <laughs> I think it's good. But um, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of time because I'm actually uh, traveling in a few days. Uh, I'm actually going to be in Sweden again, uh, in Stockholm to be more specific. And uh, some of you already probably know why I'm going there, but uh, in case you missed it, uh, Paradox announced a City Skylines build-off competition, which is uh, an idea that sort of came up after the FPS livestream we did about a month and a half ago. And we, and by we, I mean Flux and Busy Will Have some sort of thought it would be a good idea to sort of have like a build-off competition, you know, uh, so, and, and start from like a common city and see who can build the best, uh, or in the most good looking city and uh yeah we're, we're gather some some uh, prominent figures in the city skylines uh, building community so uh in case you haven't uh, seen or read or anything like that uh, i'm gonna link some i'm gonna leave some links in the description so you can uh, check them out uh it's uh it's been a a bit of a journey getting to here we've been working on this for the last couple months on top of other things that uh will probably talk about later <laughs> um but uh, we're really looking forward to this uh hopefully you can catch uh this i think it's, it's going to be a whole day live stream that's sort of the format i should have started with that uh we're hosting a live stream uh and uh so all the people will be like building live on the same on the same spot and there's going to be giveaways and uh we're, we have interviews with uh, part of the team that uh developed the game um and there's going to be some some uh, interesting things related to industries which uh, is coming out really really soon so uh if just follow me on twitter uh, honestly it just came up on the screen i wasn't planning on say this but uh, if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going to happen just follow me on twitter uh, i'm going to be tweeting uh, while while i'm on uh, the road uh, ideally we're gonna have uh we were gonna have three teams so like flux uh, jay and i could like and jay jay is beat schoolhouse and by the way i, I keep saying jay because it's faster and easier but uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we wanted to uh, sort of do like three teams because we're going to be there on site uh, and the rest of all the builders are going to be scattered, scattered all, pretty much all over the world. Um, but, uh, you know, given the technical complexities of a project like this, uh, we realized that it would have been better if I just stayed on the backstage and making sure that everything works fine and, you know, trying to sync savings between all these people. That's kind of what we're doing, by the way. Uh, we're actually using Move It more than savings, but still, it's a bit of a challenge putting all that together. I can uh, walk you through all the technicalities of that uh, once I get back, because uh, we're... We're gonna be trying a lot of crazy stuff. I think the production on this thing is gonna be top notch. So I can't can't wait for you to see it. Hopefully you can catch it. Of course, if you can't make it uh, on that uh, you know whole day live stream, uh, it's gonna be recorded so you can watch it later. But you won't get to participate on the giveaways and stuff like that. Uh, and in any case, uh, I guess I just spent like three minutes talking about this. Probably good idea to talk about what's happening on the screen or what I'm trying to accomplish in this episode. Uh, basically, since I knew I didn't have a lot of time, I decided to sort of expand what we built in the previous uh, in the previous episode. So uh, you can kind of see the back of that uh, area that we built. It's uh, it's shaping up. I'm adding a few extra roads that will serve as the uh, sort of the backbone for this uh, section of the city. And uh, this this thing right here, I, I tweeted a, a screenshot as I was building this the other day. Um, I sort of was inspired by uh, Lombard Street in uh, San Francisco. I don't know. I just had this like huge high dif uh, high difference here in the terrain. And uh, since it was a little bit too narrow for a proper slope for cars to drive in, I just decided to add this uh, curvy road. Uh, you can, uh, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, just uh, Google Lombard Street on Google Maps. Uh, in San Francisco, and it will come up. It's pretty iconic. Uh, I think actually, Kranz McGee like actually built a, a version of that in CDs, uh, like a replica of that. Uh, this one is just in loosely inspired. Uh, there's another road in a town in in Patagonia in Argentina that that looks like that. That that was also part of the idea and the inspiration. Uh, over here, what I'm doing is 
I'm extending the tram lines beyond that little loop that I made because if you don't have that loop, tra trains can turn around and then the, the lane, the, the sorry, the line that's cur currently temporary uh, created between the main station and this part of the town uh, just doesn't, it, it breaks. It needs a way for the trams to go around. So I decided to do or embellish this uh, little loop here. Uh, obviously, this area of town, I'm just laying down the roads. I'm not going to go detail. Um, just didn't have enough time. And this is probably a much larger uh, detail job that I'm going to tackle in the future. Because that's uh, kind of what we're doing here. Everything has to be done by future, uh, future street culture. Man, I hate that guy. <laughs> I always give them the worst tasks to do. Uh, present street culture is so much... Uh, so much more awesome than that. Uh, in any case, I, I am present street culture, I guess. That's weird. I don't even know what I'm saying in this, but um, just uh, pretty much following the same scheme. And in this area, pr primarily, I wanted to have some uh, modern looking buildings, uh, specifically buildings that uh, were more commercially oriented. So I tried my luck with a few vanilla assets like this one, which uh, looks great, except it's a little bit too bright, even though I try to use the uh, painter mod to add a, a, a darker hue over the textures, that didn't quite do it. Uh, it basically, once once it hits sunset and, and you look at the city, you're gonna see some cinematics, by the way, sunset and at night that I, that I prepared for this uh, for this episode. Um, but uh, this particular building, if I turn on like just a, I don't know, like 7 p.m. kind of sunset time where everything is still semi illuminated by the sun, but not quite, this building was just a beacon of white, just like super bright and everything else around it was like, you know, real more realistic colors at least so i ended up uh, switching this uh this 70s looking glass uh i don't know 10 story building which uh i don't know i thought it was kind of nice this area was clearly added later into the city uh and uh, you can sort of see the progress with the newer buildings built in like the 2000s and this building having built in the 70s there's sort of a story that that unravels as you look at all these buildings in 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 sequence if if that uh, makes any sense and uh, obviously here the terrain difference was uh, way too high I, I get a lot of comments by the way on on how i handle or how i've been handling terrain differences everyone is like really excited about it I, it's really i mean i haven't tried it all that much before but it doesn't seem like it's super difficult you just uh, add walls or or clipping things maybe you should do you know what i should do i should do one of those uh like tutorial live streams like the one i did with the essential mods i think uh that way i can just cover a few topics and then do just do q a what do you think let me know let me know in the comments if you want me to do one of those uh they're actually much way more fun uh to produce and to uh you know, to actually get information from than the regu doing regular tutorials. So figure that that's a good strategy to take from, from now on. So yeah, uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested in something like that and maybe I can go into greater detail than it's just uh, fast paced uh, sort of time lapse here, especially something that you can reference in the future uh, whenever you have questions on how to address uh, terrain differences. And, and and obviously, I mean, there, there's like imperfections that uh, I've been clever enough to not show on camera. <laughs> actually, they're not that many. Uh, people that are on Patreon can actually download the save and, and can uh, test, uh, test uh, what is it, testify? No. Yeah, I guess they could testify that there's not like funny business going on in the back, just like hiding stuff under the rock. For the most part, there are, there are like tiny little glitches and mistakes, but for the most part, it looks uh, pretty much you know, like finish. Um, also, I wanted to just uh, add a few more trees and uh, just patches of green grass that usually make all these uh, buildings look uh, great. I may come back to this, as I always say, and sometimes never do. Um, I just want to add a few more of these uh, details around this building. For example, having uh, tables uh, with umbrellas, kind of like a cafe. Uh, in front of that uh, of that office building and the one next to it, I don't know, it's something uh, a bit more interesting to see than just uh, a patch of uh, of concrete. Um, now, this uh, super large building is supposed to be a police station. I think it is a real police station or something like that, like police uh, headquarters, uh, more specifically. But uh, I figured this would be more appropriate as a sort of a government building, like some sort of a ministry or you know department of uh, something and uh 
since uh, I've been getting a lot of comments about, like, or suggestions, uh, rather, that uh, were maybe pointing out the fact that I don't have enough big buildings that are very, you know, easily identifiable from, from far away. So I figured this would be a good excuse to do that. So this sort of giant building sits in this uh, middle of this triangle shaped plot, which uh, it's not going to be surrounded. Uh, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not going to be adjacent to any one buildings aside from those on the left. That's as close as buildings will get. Everything else is just going to be trees and foliage around it, which I'm going to finish uh, by the end of this episode, by the, by the end of this episode, sorry, uh, to, I don't know, like, 70%, 60%, so it's not 100% finished, but it's definitely uh, something that uh, I, I want to keep uh, improving in the in the near future. Again, addressing all of these uh, imperfections, in this case, uh, using a combination of pop-up asphalt and the concrete wall, just, uh, you know, get... Because, like, this road, by the way, this squiggly road uh, kind of goes downhill, so, you know, stuff starts clipping all over the place if you're not that careful, so, or if you don't have the right design for it, so, yeah, I guess it actually would make a lot of sense for me to do this live stream, because I, I kind of do things on my own, like, I, I probably a year or two ago wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it this way, uh, I would, ju I would have just given up, but I've since come up with all these, like, strategies that I don't even think they just come out naturally by now, because I kind of know what I want to do. Um, or I, at least I know which uh, what to expect from all the different uh, materials that I have at uh, my disposal, like the clipping road path, and uh, you know having these concrete walls uh, together with pebble asphalt and things like that. So, yeah, I, I can understand how some people are might be having uh, issues, and I might be able to you know help <laughs> in one way or another. Um, now these pines, uh, I'm I'm having like. Having, I'm not super sold on these pines. I mean, don't get me wrong, they look amazing and I definitely want to keep them pretty much all over the place, but they look a little bit weird and isolated when they're too close to other elements. Um, like in here, like it, they don't quite blend in with everything that's around it. It's kind of like, it's almost as if they need some sort of a detailed base or detail in the base, like, uh, I don't know, like a cluster of tufts, which I, I kind of did on the shoreline of the, that, that we did, you know, I think it was like last episode. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, I think I still haven't found like a technique that I feel comfortable with that uh, that works and makes uh, the base of those trees look uh, a bit more integrated with everything that's around it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Now over here, uh, I just tried to add uh, a bit uh, or create a bit of a uh, interesting uh, layout to this road so all i did is just create an intersection that doesn't go anywhere put a patch of grass in it and then i was looking for a fountain or a statue of some kind i really need more statues because i only have like one or two and i feel like uh, a city like this could benefit from from a lot more people that need to be remembered in the form of metal standing on a plaza somewhere that makes sense um so uh, yeah i need to I, actually i need to go on the workshop for uh you know just for a lot of different assets that i'm missing that i want to add uh another another big thing that i wanted to tackle at some point or at least use as a filler i think that's actually a much more clever way to do it is construction sites so expect to see some of those uh, in the coming episodes um and uh finally here just adding a few more touches with these uh decal planters um, you know, I, want, I wanted this area to be like really green and lush and pretty, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. That's all the progress that I was able to make. Here's the before and after that you're probably been waiting for. Uh, hopefully it's saying sometime it's skipped by like a frame or two and it's like annoying, but I, I have really have very little control over that. Uh, the game just stutters sometimes randomly and yeah, there's not much I can do. Uh, in any case, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to check out this uh, community live stream we're putting together. Um, but uh, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.